Hello and welcome to another episode of the CD Garage. This is episode number 446 featuring Marai Sadayuki, who is an incredible screenwriter in, of course, the space of anime. I recorded this podcast while I was in Japan for THU Japan. Wonderful podcast to do with him. Really great stuff to talk about. You're probably wondering, where am I right now? I'm actually in turn to Italy for the VIEW conference. More on that later. But let's talk a little bit about Marai-san fabulous person. He's done amazing work. I am sorry that I'm just doing this off my phone in terms of reading notes because I have had a very long day traveling here. But he has written some amazing stuff and he's done stuff like Perfect Blue, Steam Boy, and of course Millennium Actress. Uh, fabulous thing to talk about. We did this through a translator because of course he does not speak English, but I thought it would be great to have the translator through the whole podcast because then it could be a bilingual episode and a really great thing to record. So I'm very happy happy to be able to do that. Uh, okay, some of the amazing things he talked about, I mean, I was actually very, you know, every time I do these podcasts, I talk about people in visual effects, what influenced you, and they always end up saying something like uh, Jurassic Park or Star Wars. And of course, for him, it was Godzilla and Ultraman, which I thought was really, really interesting. And he talks about storytelling and how in Japan, storytelling after World War II became very influential in that space, which is a really cool thing to have. So uh, very cool to talk about that. We talk about the difference between Japanese storytelling and Western storytelling, and actually even his own concerns about how Western storytelling is starting to influence Japanese storytelling, and he has great uh, worries about what's gonna happen in that space. So really interesting conversation about that. Uh, okay, we got a couple of updates. Like I mentioned, I am in turn Italy and I'm going to be at the VIEW conference and I'm actually going to be talking here. Uh, right now, uh, the, turn go, uh, the, the VIEW conference goes between the 15th and the 20th of October. I will be talking on, uh, let's see, Wednesday the 18th at 12.45 p.m. So make sure and attend that conference when you come here. It'd be great to have you there uh, and love to be able to see what you're talking about. And what will I be talking about? Well couple of things. I'll be talking about virtual production and uh, specifically how real-time ray tracing is going to influence virtual production, which leads me to my product announcements, which is Vantage 2.1 that has been out recently, and it includes something that's very special, which is called ray reconstruction, which is part of DLSS 3.5. And between DLSS and ray reconstruction, we have massively increased the quality and speed of Vantage, thanks to a lot of AI technology that's been developed through Vantage, along with a lot of the integration work that we have done over at Chaos as well. So very exciting to have that there. All right. Uh, besides that, if you guys want to know more about the podcast, you guys know what to do. You can follow us, of course, on our podcast page, chaos.com slash CG Garage. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook, you can go to facebook, facebook.com slash CG Garage Podcast. And of course, if you have other ideas for podcasts or influences or people you want to talk about or even feedback on this particular episode or more episodes, let us know. That is, of course, at um, uh, labs at chaosgroup.com is our email. But for now, please enjoy episode number 446 with Marai san. Welcome to another CG Garage where the Chaos Group talks. You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays in high dynamic range. We know that ambient occlusion is passe. Global illumination won't lead you astray. And while image based lighting is really swell, you need to make sure everything has for now. Okay, thank you for so much for being here. Um, I often do interviews with people in visual effects, and I always ask them what's their origin story, what got them excited about doing visual effects. And they almost always say, it's because I was a kid and I saw Star Wars, or it's because I was a kid and I saw Jurassic Park. Uh, what is your origin story? What is the thing that got you excited as a, as a, as a young person to, uh, to do the things that you do? えっと、今日はありがとうございます。インタビューに答えていただきまして、で、あのまあ、私よくあの VFX に携わっている人にインタビューをするんですけれども、その時にあの。
あなたをこう興奮させる元になるものって何ですかっていう質問をするんですね。で例えば子どもの頃に「スター・ウォーズ」を見たからとか「ジュラシック・パーク」を見たからっていうふうにあのお答えいただくことが多かったりすることもあるんですけれどもあの村井さんのもんえー、ともこう興奮させるようなものっていうものはどういうものがありますかあの僕らあの日本の特撮番組っていうのが子どもの頃からやっぱり大好きで、えー、円谷プロダクションっていう円谷英二監督が特撮監督をやって作っていた「ゴジラ」であるとか「ゴジラ」シリーズであるとかそれをテレビシリーズで怪獣ものというものを、えー、テレビでやろうって言って円谷プロダクションが作っていた「ウルトラマン」っていうシリーズがあるんですよ。でそれをやっぱり子供の時に見ていてい、えーあの映画ってすごいなあるいは特撮 SFX っていうものはこんなにすごいんだっていうことを子供の時から浴びてやっぱり僕らも育ってでそういう世界に行こうっていうふうに思ったんですね。Well, in Japan, like living in Japan, like and as a child,、um, you know, there are like Godzilla series and then、uh, it, you know, this is created by Tsuburaya、uh, mm-hmm. production and Eiji Tsuburaya san created these and then、uh, there's this kaiju series、yes. uh, on TV, Ult- <laughs> Ultraman, Ultraman,、yes. Ultraman, right? And、uh, as a kid, I saw this, these movies and then I thought it was great. And the、uh, SFX was, you know, totally great. So as a kid, I was really excited to watch those、uh, series. And then uh, that uh, got me into, you know, this industry.、Uh, that's very, very interesting. I am. I'm curious, obviously, you know,、uh, uh, manga and anime has, has become very popular in the West more recently, but I don't know if everyone knows its origins in、uh, Japan. And if you can tell me a little bit about how it's become so important, what, how, when did it start, when did people become passionate about it, and how it's become such a big industry here? あのすごく面白いですねあの漫画とかアニメってあの西洋ではわりかし最近人気が出てきたりっていうことがあるんですけれどもで日本でそういうその元があるそのあのオリジナルなもの元があるっていうことを皆さん知らなかったりするんですね。でそれが例えば日本にとってどれぐらい重要なのかとかどいつぐらいにこう始まってきたのかどういうふうに始まってきたのかっていうようなことをちょっとお話しいただいてもいいですかあのそうですねやっぱり映画の歴史とともに、えー、特撮っていうものが培われていて、えー、ゴジラシリーズは1954年に最初のゴジラが、えー、作られたんですけれどもその時から、えー、東方という会社が怪獣映画を作ろうって言って作り続けていたんですでそして、えー、テレビシリーズで初めてやっぱりウルトラシリーズっていうものが確立して我々はそのウルトラマンを見て、えー、脚本の書き方もウルトラマンから教わって、えー、そうやって次の世代に受け継がれていってこれを作り続けようっていうふうになっていた世代なんですね。Well. So we have this history of、uh, tokusatsu,、um, the very <laughs> special、uh, effect of、uh, these kaiju、uh, series, kaiju movies or Godzilla movies. And、uh, the very first Godzilla was created in 1954. And then、uh, the company called Toho、uh, you know, continues creating these kaiju、uh, movies. And then、uh, there's this TV series, the Ultraman series.、Mm-hmm. And then、uh, I actually learned screenwriting、uh, watching the Ultra, Ultraman series. And so, you know, t h i s history of, of、uh, Kaiju series actually、uh, is inherited、uh, to this day. So, the Kodom Bangumi to Ste, Tskurale, t e i t が、えー、実は大人が見てもとても楽しめる社会性がある作品だっていうことを、あのー、我々のちょっと先輩方の世代の人たちがあのムック本っていうものを作り出してムック本雑誌のムック本などによって特集することによって、えー、とても社会性があるのだっていうことを広く周知する。時代があったんですそれが僕らが中学生ぐらいの時で、えー、それを見ていると
、えー、スタッフリストっていうのが載っていてこんな監督やこんな脚本家の人たちがこの作品を作っているのだっていうリストがあったんですよ。でそれを見るととても僕が好きな作品ウルトラシリーズの中でとても好きな回を同じ脚本家の人が書いているっていうことが分かって脚本家っていうのはとんでもなくすごいんだっていうことが分かったんですそれで僕は脚本家になりたいっていうふうに思ったんですね。And、uh, those kaiju series or ultraman series it's for kids basically but then、uh, it's actually fun I mean adult like a grown up you know people、uh, can watch and enjoy it as well And that means that the,、uh, so there's this certain、um, social, socialness <laughs>、mm -hmm. uh, to this、uh, series. And、uh, a little bit like an old, a little bit like an older、um, generation、uh, started actually、uh, feeling that, you know, there's this certain socialness to this series. And yeah, it's fun. The adults can actually watch、uh, those series and enjoy them. And then、uh, there's this special edition of the magazine that、uh, specializes, like features this e series. And、uh, I think it was, I, I was in a junior high, you know, teenager, and uh, I, I uh, love to, to read these magazines. And then、uh, I actually. Found a staff list in the back of the、uh, magazine, and then I found that the episodes of Ultraman series I liked、uh, were created by the same screenwriter actually.、Oh. And so I thought that the screenwriting is great, and you know, that, that's why I actually、um, became really interested in screenwriting. And I thought, okay, I want to be one someday. That's very interesting, and、uh, I want to get back to screenwriting, but I still have a, a few more questions about, uh, about uh, some of these moments.、Um, you mentioned that、uh, anime was seen for kids, but then adults started to get interested in it. And I, as a kid, also watched、uh, some old Japanese cartoons. I watched Ultraman as well. But、um, I remembered when I saw Akira. That suddenly this is something completely different. This is a new thing <laughs> and this is very special. And、uh, I'm wondering, is, I felt that this is a moment in the, in, the, in the history that was important. And I don't know if I'm correct or not, if there's actually something else that was important.、Uh, but it was, you know, when Jurassic Park came out, movies were going to change forever. And when Akira came out, anime was going to be a different thing. Do you feel that same way? <laughs> <笑>えっとですね、あのすごく面白いお話ありがとうございます。で、あの脚本についてはまた後ほどあの改めてお伺いしたいと思うんですけども、その前にまたいくつかあのアニメの話とかをさせていただきたいんですけれども、あの先ほどおっしゃったようにアニメは子供がまあ見るものとしてあの始まったけれども、大人も楽しめ十分楽しめるものだということをおっしゃってましたよね。で、あの私も子供のとしてあの日本のものを見ましたでウルトラマンも見たことあるんですね。で、あのアキラを見たときにあこれは何か今までと違うぞと感じたんですね、うん、何か新しくて特別なものがものだっていうふうに感じたんですけれどもでまあこれがなんかすごくこのアニメとかそういうものの,あの歴史の中ですごく重要なあのところだと時だったんじゃないかなっていうふうに思ったりもするんですけれども、まあ、その自分の,その考えが合ってるかどうかは分からないんですがで例えば「ジュラシック・パーク」っていう映画があったんですけどその「ジュラシック・パーク」が出てきた時もやっぱり同じようにこれからなんか全く違うことが始まるみたいなことを感じたんですね。で、まあ、アキラと同じようにそういうふうにあの思ったんですけれども、村井さんとしてはその辺どういうふうにお感じになりますか。そうですね。アキラはやっぱりアニメーションの歴史の中でとても大きなあの一つの作品だったと思いますが、えー、っと我々はその前にあの大友さんの漫画を読んでいたんですよね。で、その時にもすごい衝撃を受けて。えー、それまではあの日本では手塚治虫先生というあの、まあ、漫,画を作った漫画の歴史を作ったような、えー、先生がいてでその系統の漫画しか読んでいなかった時に、えー、やっぱり大友さんやあと諸星大二郎という偉大な漫画家もいるんですけれどもその人たちが出てきた時にこれは何かもっと何異質なもの
が現れたぞっていうふうに感じてでその影響下にあったのでそれを映像にしたっていうところがアキラはとてもすごくてでもこのレベルのものがやっぱり作れるんだで作った人がいると我々は今度はそれを追いかけなければいけないんだっていうことをアキラを見た時にとても大きに、えー、とてもあの印象深く感じました。で同じようにやっぱり「ジュラシック・パーク」が出てきた時にはこれはちょっとアキラとは違う,う衝撃があってこれは今度はイマジネーションしたものが何でもできる何でも作ってもらえる時代になったんだっていうふうに感じてこれからはそのイマジネーションしたものをどうやって、えー、映像ストーリーに盛り込んでいければいいのかっていうことを考えればいいんだなっていうふうに考えました。でもそれは結構一瞬で終わってあの意外と慣れてしまうとそれほど衝撃がなくなってしまって何かやっぱり手作りの感覚があった特撮のものからあの CG になった時にあの我々はちょっと戸惑いも同時に感じたんですね。Right. Uh, yeah, just... As you said, Akira, it, was, it created a history, I think, like a new history, and it's, it's really important.、Um, but before that, I, I used to、uh, read a manga by、uh, Otomo san, and he was very,、um, you know,、uh, I mean, shocking as well, I mean, for me.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, even before that, there's Osamu Tezuka, Tezuka Osamu. And、uh, he actually、uh, also created a history of manga. And you know, you know, everybody、uh, enjoyed Tezuka's manga. But then、uh, we have Otomo san and、uh, Daijiro Moroboshi san.、Um, so these two have the, the manga created by these two were really, really different. And、uh, then after that, えー、とごめんなさい大友さん諸星さんっていう人たちがいて異質なものだなっていうふうに思ってあでそれをさらに映像化できるっていうことがすごいっていうことですよね。ねまさか動くとは思っていなかったっていう。<笑> right and we have this great manga done by 大友さん and 諸星さん but then you know I never actually imagined that we could see those manga in like a moving picture like、right. in, in, a, in a film or whatever and It was really、uh, shocking to me that we could see、uh, those visuals like, like moving with this level.、Um, so it was really、uh, shocking to me as well. And、uh, Jurassic Park as well. I mean, it's, it's totally different from Akira、mm-hmm. uh, type of thing, but it was also very shocking. And、uh, I thought, like, when I saw Jurassic Park, Park, I thought that now you know you can imagine whatever you imagine in your brain, and you somebody can actually get that into picture in a moving picture. And、uh, so then I started thinking, like, okay, how、uh, you know, like,、uh, imagination can be、uh, you know, visually created in a, in a story、uh, type of、uh, work. And,、えっと、right, and, and, but once you get used to watching those、uh, things, then it kind of、uh, loses the kind of like a craftsmanship kind of thing like,、huh. uh, that I felt when I watched Tokusatsu. Tokusatsu is like that、uh, very old Godzilla, Ultraman type of、right. you know,、uh, special effect and all that. And so when everything started like,、uh, being created by CG,、um, I was a little bit、um, kind of, I, I thought something was kind of lost. Yes, I understand.、Um, and I,、uh, it's interesting that you say that.、Um, but I do want to focus on stories, so I'm going to go back to that. But I want to thank you for your input on that. Um, you said that you saw the name of the person who wrote the, your favorite Ultraman episodes and you realized it was all the same person.、Um, so, this was the start of your journey to become a writer.、Uh, 
Um, how did that journey go? What, what brought you to uh, becoming a writer and what was your first success in that area? はい、あの興味深いお話ありがとうございます。あのー、ここでそうですね。またちょっとストーリーっていうところにあのフォーカスを戻したいと思うんですけれども、先ほど先ほどあのウルトラマンを見ていて、あの自分の好きなエピソードが同じ人が書かれていたっていうことをあの見つけたっていうふうにおっしゃってたんですけれども、で、の村井さんのそのまあ旅というかそういうものがどういうふうにあのスタートしていったかっていうことを知りたいんですけれどもあの、まあ、どういうふうに始まってであのスクリーンライターとしての,あの旅がですねどういうふうに始まってそして最初の成功というものはどういうものだったか教えていただけますでしょうか。そうですねその学生の頃にやっぱりそういうものが好きな人たちと、えー、サークル活動をしたりしながら、えー、そういう文化に触れていて。で自分も将来そうなりたいなと思ったんですけれども、えー、一旦はでもあの広告代理店に就職しましてでプランナーという仕事をやっていてでプランナーもすぐあの会社を辞めて独立して、えー、一人でやってたんですけれども、えー、その中でやっぱり脚本という職業に就きたいっていうことであのフジテレビであのヤングシナリオ大賞っていう。あのアワードがあるんですけれどもそれに応募して賞、えー、をもらって、えー、脚本家デビューっていう形になりましたこれは93年ですかね「えっと、飛べない乙女の授業中」という作品で、えー、デビューしました。Okay. So, uh, when I was a student in college,、uh, we had this、um, like、club thing、uh, created with the people who、uh, loved these things. Yep. And then,、uh, you know, we were learning the culture and all that. And I、uh, started thinking that I would like to be a, a screenwriter one day. And, but after, gra- after graduating from college, I actually、uh, started working as a planner in an agency. And, uh, but, um, ad- sorry, advertising agency, I started working there as a planner. And,、uh, You know, I, I left the company, and, but I was still working as a planner.、Uh, but then, you know, I still wanted to become a screenwriter. And、uh, I actually applied、um, for a screen、uh, play for Fuji TV, and it's called a Young, Young Scenario Award, I think. And the, I won, and the, it was 1993. And、uh, my work was called Tobenai Otome no Jigyo Chu. It's not a Ego no title, but it's not a title. It's not a title. Well, it's a flightless girls <laughs> in class. Sorry, I, I, there, okay. there's no, there's no like, English title, but、okay. it's called Tobenai Otome no Jigyo Chu.、Yeah. Something about、uh, high school girls. Oh, okay. Okay.、Uh, And so that was, the, that was the beginning, I'm assuming. Is that correct? So, so, that's the beginning of the story. 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 And then I、uh, started working as a screenwriter in Fuji TV. And、uh, soon after, I got a work,、uh, I, I mean, I、uh, was able to work in anime as well. And it was called Perfect Blue by、mm-hmm. Satoshi Kon, director Satoshi Kon. And that was the first、uh, animation、um, work I did. What year was that? Around what time was that? えっと、脚本書いたのは94、5年、5年ぐらいですかね。I think it was 95 when I wrote, wrote the、uh, screenplay for this. Okay. And、uh, you've been very successful since then. That was a big show, right? すごく、あれですよね、そこからすごく成功され、成功し続けているというか、すごく人気あったものですよね。うん、あのおかげさまで仕事はあの順調に、まあ、あの来るようになって、えー、いくつか、えー、やるようにな
って、まあ、コンサント好きの作品で千年女優を作ろうっていうことで、まあ、引き続きやったりあとはあのー「パーフェクトブルー」自体が企画に大友克弘さんが入ってたのでその時に紹介してもらってで、えー、大友さんがスチームボーイを作る時にじゃあ脚本書いてくれないかっていうことでお手伝いしたと。いう経緯があってその辺の、あのー、仕事をしながらでも、あのー、テレビシリーズのーアニメーションもたくさんやってでそうですね、うんあのー、楽しいこともあればあの苦労もたくさんあったと思います。Well, it, well yeah,、uh, fortunately,、um, <coughs> my work is, is you know, like a smoothly, <coughs> pretty much smoothly going. And then、uh, I worked on、uh, Sen Nen Joyu, a、uh, millennium actress,、uh, with Satoshi Kon again. And then、um, o- Katsuhiro Otomo san、uh, was actually. Excuse me, Sen Nen Joyu de Otomo Katsuhiro san. Ah, yeah, but the Perfect Blue was in the book that Otomo san was in the book. Ah, in the book that Otomo san was in the book. Katsuhiro Otomo san was actually involved in Perfect Blue as well.、Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I knew.、Uh, Otomo san, then. And then、uh, after that, I worked with him again with the Steam Boy when Otomo san directed a, a movie called Steam Boy.、Mm-hmm. And,、uh, but I also did a lot of anime, TV you know, anime series.、Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I enjoy my work a lot, but at the same time, you know, sometimes, of course,、uh, you know, it's, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. I watched、uh, Mushishi as well.、Mm-hmm. I thought it was really cool.、Um, Thank you. <laughs>、um, the、uh, one thing that I think is interesting about anime, my,、uh, I, I've enjoyed it to some part, but my kids love it. My kids are obsessed. They would rather watch anime than anything else.、Uh, but、uh, there's so. Much diversity, so many different kinds of stories, so many different things that are happening.、Um, and listening to Amy's talk today, I thought she brought up something very interesting that、uh, I would like wondering. She says, like, define yourself. What is yourself? What is your, 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 your story or the kind of stories that you like to do that sort of say, ah, that is definitely a m u r i s a n、uh, uh, story? You know, what, what can you tell me? What is you? What is the things that you like to talk about and the stories you like to tell? <laughs> えーっとですね、すごく面白いですよねで、あのーまあ、自分ももちろんアニメ見ますけれども私の子供がですね本当にアニメ大好きでもうアニメ以外のものはもう見ないぐらいあのすごくあの夢中になってるんですけれどもでそのアニメの中の世界って本当に多様性があるし本当にいろいろなストーリーがあると思うんですよね。であの今朝の,あのエイミー・アニオビさんの話を聞いていてもすごく面白かったんですけれども彼女が言っていたのが自分をまあ定義しなさいとあなたのストーリーは何ですかっていうことを言っていたと思うんですよねで本当にこれは村井さんにお伺いしたいなと思って聞いてたんですけれどもその村井さんのストーリーというのはどういうものなのか村井さん,が村井さんはどんな物語を伝えたいというふうに思っているのか。これが我々の世代の一番大きなテーマかなと思ってるんですけれどもあの僕らが影響を受けた先人たちはあの戦争体験があるんですよでその悲惨な状況からあの立ち上がった経験をドラマにしていってでそれは我々の今見ても胸を打つドラマになっているのですが。あの我々の世代はその戦争が終わって高度成長期に入っていて、えー、比較的安定した時代になって、えー、非常に深刻なテーマがないのではないかっていうふうに学生時代も思っていたし、えー、我々は何を描けばいいんだろうっていうことをずっと悩み続けているんですね。でそれは多分僕の少し上の世代なんですけれども安野秀明さんたちが描いていることも同じだと思います。でその中で、えっと、描くものがないなりにあがいている自分たちの姿っていうものを作品に投影することだけはできるのかなっていうふうに思い続けています。そしてもう一つは物語というものがそうやって人を感動させるということ。がみんなそれは素敵だと思うのでしょうけれどもそこに潜む怖さっていうものを
我々は描けるのではないかっていうふうに思ってますだからあの感動させながら少しそれを裏切るっていうことを毎回、えー、ちょっとずつテーマとして、えー、入れて、えー、いるんですねでそれを割と面白がってくれているあの観客の人たちはそのずらし方を面白がってくれているように僕は感じています。Well,、uh, that's something I've been actually、uh, thinking about because、um, the generation before me,、um, people had this、uh, you know, experience of a war. They, they actually、uh, experienced war, big war. And、uh, so they have this very strong story that they actually, you know, they. Everything was like demolished and everything, but yeah, they actually had to start all over again from the war. So they have this story to tell. But, and yeah, you know, if we watch those stories now, you know, we still we are still very moved and everything. But our generation actually,、uh, you know, we, we don't have that strong, you know,、uh, like a, a event to tell. Like, you know, it was a very, our economy. Was going, you know, growing really rapidly, and yeah, it was pretty like a stable the society, was stable. So,、um, like when I was in college, I also thought that the okay, why can't I tell as a story?、Um, I, I'm still, you know, thinking what story I can tell and all that. And、uh, the stories that、uh, Hideaki Anno san. Uh, creates, I think you know, he also、uh, is my generation, and he, he also,、um, you know,、uh, his stories actually、um, have that kind of reflection as well. And、um, so, because we don't have this very strong thing to tell,、uh, we actually very struggle、uh, to create story. And so, what I do is like, I tell a story, and I mean, we can, I can actually create a story that moves people, but that, that's good, I think, of course. But at the same time, I think it's a little bit、um, scary. Um, So I think it's a little bit, there's a risk, I mean, it's kind of dangerous to, to create a story that can move people. And uh, so um, a story, stories I create,、um, I try to like, put in things that kind of betray Uh, you know, the beautiful stories or whatever, and you know, just, just even a little bit. And、uh, people actually、uh, find it very interesting or intriguing. And yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to do in my stories. Very interesting.、Um, the, so I've also been thinking about story and structure more recently. And、uh, again, you know, American or Western stories or movies have a very specific structure.、They're, that's one of the things that it's, if it doesn't have the structure, people feel uncomfortable. <laughs>、um, and then also, for example, I was thinking、uh, Brazilian soap operas have a very specific structure, and people expect that. Is there a very specific structure to anime? Uh, and does that specifically come from anime or does that come from、uh, Japanese culture and Japanese storytelling itself? 
、まあ、自分も最近よくあの構造というか構成というかということを考えることがあるんですけれどもあの例えばアメリカのものとかあるいはもういわゆる西洋のものというかそういうものだとあのいわゆるそのしっかりとした構造といいますか構成というものがあるんですよね。でそういうものがないものだと人はちょっとこうあの不安に思ってしまうというかそういうことがあったりするんですけれども。であとそのまあ、Did you say Brazilian soap opera? Brazilian soap opera. <笑>なんかブラ,ブラジリアンソープオペラなんかブラジルのなんかソープオペラっていうんですかそういうあの,のがあってでそういうものからあの必ず人っていうものはこういうふうになってるんだなっていうふうに思いながら見るわけなんですけれどもそういうものってアニメにもあるのでしょうかでもしアニメにあるとするとそれもアニメからそういうものが作られてきたのか、あるいはその日本の文化の中にそういうものが含まれているということなんでしょうか。あの脚本の作劇法の歴史でいうと、やはりあの実は結構西洋の作劇法から学んで作られているっていうことはあるんですよ。あの黒澤明監督の時代から、あの脚本術っていうのは、あのそうですね、主にロシア演劇。の構造を学んでそれを、えー、映画のストラクチャーに当てはめようっていう歴史があってそれは我々も学んできたしでその中からやっぱり90年代ぐらいになってシドフィールドの三幕構成っていう、えー、スリーアクトストラクチャーを、あのー、輸入の形で、えー、と学んだりはします。で、えー、今日もライアンさんの話でもあったんですけれども。あのキャンベルのジョセフ・キャンベルの「あのヒロズ・ジャーニー」ですねそれもあの知識としては知ってるし、えー、同じような構造なんだなっていうことを、えー、踏まえながらただ日本の歴史の中ではそれを、えー、きちっとこう作ろうみたいな公式にはならずにあのアレンジして使おうっていうふうに、えー、我々は常に意識してアレンジするようにしています。なのであのそのストーリーに乗っかってるように見えて、えー、ひねっていくずらしていくスライドさせていくっていうことを意識しながら、えー、作ろうとしていますだから公式通りにあえてしないようにするっていう文化が実はベースにはあるのかもしれないですね。日本の文化の中に,日本の文化の中にはい。Uh, style of、mm-hmm. writing actually, we learned that.、Uh, I mean, we imported it and we learned that, of course, as well. And、uh, Ryanson's talk,、uh, you know, Ryanson actually talked、mm-hmm. about Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey,、yep. and、uh, you know, that, that has the same structure as well. But、um, so, looking at、uh, Japanese、uh, way of like creating stories. We do not、uh, employ the structure as is, but we, we learn it, but we, we arrange it a little bit, we change it a little bit. And then we, we always do that. And、um, so you know, there's this、uh, structure, there's this story that going, you know, go, goes, goes on, but the,、uh, we actually change a little bit, like, you know, we, we, we shift a little bit. And、um, I think maybe, maybe these, you know, like、uh, trying to shift things, maybe that's in、uh, Japanese culture as well, maybe. I'm,、uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I obviously, you know, a lot of uh, uh, Western or, or, or Americans are trying to remake a lot of anime into their own. Interpretation of it, so like Ghost in the Shell or whatever, they don't always succeed <laughs> in making that work. And、uh, I'm wondering is it because we try to shoehorn it into a specific kind of American style 
that we lost some of the specialness of what you said when you shift it slightly to make it the way that you do it. <laughs> あのそうですね例えば西洋であの、まあ、アメリカとかですね西洋とかで、えっと、その日本のものをこうリメイクしたりすることがある,あるじゃないですかあの、はい、広角機動隊、はい、ゴーストエンドシェルとかでも必ずしも成功しないっていうことがあって<笑>それってもしかしたらそのアメリカン例えばアメリカだったらアメリカンスタイルにこう寄せてしまうというかそういうことをやってしまうがために今村井さんがおっしゃったようなちょっとずらすっていうところを失ってしまっているのかなと。いうふうにも思ったりもします。もしかしたらそうですね。あのー、いろんなあの海外のクリエイターの方のお話を伺っているとあ、やはりプロデューサーのまあ権限が大きくてで出資者がお金を回収しなければいけないっていうシステムが出来上がっていて、そうやっていろんな人たちが入ってくることによって、クリエイターの創意工夫の部分があの本当は面白いはずなのに、クリエイターの創意工夫の部分は公式には合わないと言ってカットされていったりすることがあるんじゃないかと。で、そうすると一番オーソドックスなストーリーが出来上がって。それは観客はもうすでに見たことのある作品になってしまうので退屈なものになってしまうっていう理屈があのまかり通ってしまっているのかもしれないなと思います。Well, right. Yeah, maybe yes, because, like,、um, when, you know, sometimes I hear,、uh, you know, creators from overseas and then they tell me that、um, in, in Western world,、uh, the producers actually. Are very strong, you know, they have the final say.、Yep. And then,、uh, so they have this mission to, like, you know, recoup the money that、uh, they invest, right? And yeah, there are a lot of、um, uh, people involved in it. So I think that, like, creators, you know, like us creators think about a lot of like interesting things, but yeah, those things are. Sometimes cut because you know they don't make money and whatever. So,、um, and then the finished product, the finished story、uh, is going to be a little bit like you know boring because you know everybody has seen something like that before.、So. <laughs> <Yeah> . Yep. <laughs>、um, okay, but、uh, obviously, as、uh, you know. The,、uh, the popularity of anime and manga has really exploded in,、uh, all over the world right now.、Uh, and everyone has an interest in it. Do you think it's going to be hard to keep the, 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 the specialness of the Japanese part of anime and manga? Or do you think it's just going to become, in the future, just a thing of its own that's going to grow and evolve? To become an international genre of some kind. あのアニメとか漫画とかの人気って今すごくてですね世界中ですごくて本当にこうわーっとあの人気が出ているんですけれどもで本当にみんな興味を持ってあの見てるんですよねでもそういうふうになることによってそのいわゆる日本の漫画とかアニメとかの特殊性というか特別な感じというかそういうものが失われてしまうと思われますかそれともこう未来将来にこうあのなっていくにつれて、えっと、この世界的なこのジャンルとしてこう成長していくようなものになると思われますか今あのそのどちらに転ぶかの境界線に立っているような気がします。でそれはは非常に作り手としては危機感を持っていてで、えー、先ほど、あのー、言いましたシステムの中で、えー、典型的なものになっていくっていう状況が、あのー、いろんな現場で実際に起こっていてでやはりあまり面白くないものにみんながこう一斉に真似して作っていくっていう状況がここ何年か続いてる。のですでそれは非常に危機だなと作り手としては思っているのですが一方でその作り方がどんどん変わっていって、えー、っとあまりお金をかけないでも面白いものが作れるようになっているのでそういったインディーズの中から新しいものが出てくる可能性は、え
まだあるなとただ、それは日本に限らず世界中で一斉に競争しているので日本のクリエーターは今ちょっと立ち遅れているのではないかなというふうに個人的にはかあの感じていてとてもちょっと、えー、将来に対しては、えー、危機感を覚えています。Right.、Um, I think we are at the border right now.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, so I feel a little bit,、uh, you know, risk, you know, I, I, I feel a risk actually as a creator.、Um, because, like I said before, so、um, we like,、uh, started, like, create, I mean,、um, you know, we create things, I'm mean, not we, sorry.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they, they kind of、uh, create. Um, those, like, a, in, a, in a certain structure, in a certain system, and the products actually are not very interesting, very boring, actually. You know,、uh, you know, I've seen that before, kind of thing. So, that actually is happening right now. And so, you know, I think the past few years,、uh, things, I mean,、uh, production kind of started、uh, happening that、um, they. Uh, follow you know, this same structure and the、uh, not very interesting、um, uh, works、uh, are coming out. And so I、uh, feel it's a、uh, sense of crisis, I guess. Crisis, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. I feel you know, a sense of crisis actually right now that's happening. And,、um, but at the same time, now a lot of things can be created without. Lots of money, you know, even though you don't have a lot of money, you can actually create interesting things.、Um, so, maybe like, you know, from like a indies, you know, we can probably uh, have uh, see interesting, like new and interesting things. But at the same time, a lot of people started doing that. So,、um, in that, I think Japanese creators are a little bit. Uh, not, not catching up, you know, they're a little bit behind、uh, in, terms mm. of, in terms of creating、uh, interesting and new things. And、uh, again, so I feel a little bit like a you know, crisis for the future for、uh, Japanese creators.、Um, I too think that there's a crisis, <laughs> not just in anime, but in a lot of entertainment as well. Uh, and I, but I also feel that there is hope, just like you were saying, with independent movies or people that do things very creative without the pressure of money、um, to do that.、Um, and、uh, I hope that we will be able to see the same success because anime was popular because it was very different. And、um, I'm hoping that we can do the same thing <laughs> again. Thank you. そうですね、あの自分も同じようにやっぱりちょっと危機的なものを感じているところはありますアニメに限らずエンタメっていうところにおいてですけれどもなんですけれどもやっぱりあの期待するのはそのおっしゃったようにあのインディーズの方のクリエイターの人たちでその新しいものを作っていってもらいたいなっていうことをちょっと期待するところもあってで同じようにこう成功をあのしていってもらいたいな例えばアニメがすごくやっぱりこう人気が出てきたっていうのはやっぱり違違ううももののだだかかかららら他とととっていうことがあると思うんですよねなのでそういう意味でもまたあの新しいものが出てきて、えっと、またみんながあのそういうように違うものが出てきたっていう感じで、えっと、成功していってもらうと嬉しいなっていうふうには思っています、はい、あのそのためにはやっぱりクリエーターに対する興味っていうものが大切だと思うんですけれどもそれがやっぱりこの10年ぐらい薄れていて。えー、我々があの映画を見て、えー、一番注目するのは監督や脚本家が、えー、誰なのか誰が作ったのかこんなすごいことを考えた人は誰なんだっていうことがあの自分たちがその業界に入るきっかけになっていたと思うんですけれどもそういう,うなんていうのかなクリエーターに対する興味っていうのがちょっと薄れているような気がします。えー、でコンテンツが重要視されていてコンテンツこんなコンテンツだから面白いのだっていうことばかりがフィーチャーされていて作り手の影が薄くなっていると。でそれがあのやはり続く世代次の世代に
、えー、影を落としているような気がするのでもう一度ちょっとクリエイターに対する興味っていうものが復活するといいなっていうふうに思っています。Well, to, um... You know,、uh, look at the future, and I think, well, I mean, right now,、uh, people started、um, not having、uh, interest in creators themselves, actually,、um, because, I mean, probably like a,、uh, past 10 years, I think、uh, they lost interest in creators themselves. Like, well, like I said before, like I, when I watch a movie, I, I mean, yeah, when, I,、uh, when people watch movies and you know, they actually see the credit of、uh, you know, who directed this and who wrote a、uh, screenplay, and、uh, it was actually,、uh, you know, I mean, when I、uh, got into this industry, I look at those、uh, staff lists and uh, really uh, got interested in. in Uh, who created this and all that, but、um, now they focus more on the contents themselves and not the creators. So、uh, I think、uh, I really want people to、uh, be interested in, in creators again, and so that you know,、uh, this you know, crisis will probably、uh, you know, be not a crisis <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Uh, yes, I hope, I hope so too. I think that、uh, people used to care about directors and writers a lot more,、um, and hopefully they will again uh, as well. Uh, I love the fact that there's such amazing stories and things that I would never think of come out of anime. My,、uh, my kids introduced me to a show, and I think it's called Assassination Classroom. That's just like, how would you come up with this idea? It's insane. Uh, but I love that this, this, it feels so creative to come up with great ideas. And uh, hopefully, uh, creators like yourself will inspire others to dream big as well. So, this is what I'm saying. I'm going to say that 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 I'm g o Assassination in classroom? Assassination classroom. I think that's what it's called. Ah, sorry. Assassination classroom. I think that's what it's called. 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 Assassination あのクリエイターたちっていうのはすごく重要だと思っていてなので例えば村井さんのような方々がそれをやっぱ後世に伝えてそれがどんどんあの大きくなっていくといいなっていうふうには思いますねそうですね僕もどそう思います yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Thank you so much for your time It's been wonderful uh, and uh, it was really great to, to learn、uh, from you and,、uh, and to be able to pass some of the knowledge that you've been doing at this event Uh, and for people on my show to be able to hear from you as well. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.